Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. This time I have an Art SLA-1 amplifier to look at. This is a really small but powerful unit. It's got two channels as you can see, channel 1 and channel 2. I have a 500 hertz sine wave as my input and I have my output hooked up to my two 8 ohm 50 watt dummy resistors as well as the two channels of my oscilloscope. And I have both channels set to approximately negative 26 dB. So let's go ahead and take a look at the failure mode which is very obvious. Here we are at the scope. I have channel 1 on the top and channel 2 on the bottom. And as you can see, channel 1 has a much lower output than channel 2, so that is our failure mode. Before we dive into the unit and remove the cover, I'm going to first take a look at the schematic so we can try and identify some key areas to test. Here's the entire schematic for the amplifier unit. It all fits on one page conveniently. The bottom section shows the power supply, which we're not concerned with. The top section is what we're concerned with. This shows the amplification section for channel 1 and channel 2. As you can see, channel 1 and channel 2 are nearly identical and they're just separated by the black dashed line for clarity. Each signal will go through a series of operational amplifiers before going through the final amplification stage, the seven transistors, and then finally their output. So to test and try and identify where our issue is coming in on channel 1, I'm going to test the output of each amplification section of channel 1 and compare it to the amplification section of channel 2. Since channel 2 is a known good reference, it'll give us a good idea of where our issue is coming in for channel 1. For instance, I'll start with op amp U3C for channel 1. I'll check that output and I'll compare it to op amp U3B for channel 2. If those look good, I'll move, on, I'll move on to the next operational amplifiers U3D and U3A. And if those are good, I'll move on to op amps U1A and U5A. If those look good, I'll know that the issue is coming about in the final amplification stage with the uh, BJTs. Here's the unit with the cover off. Let's take a quick look around before we start probing for signals. We have our input power coming in in the back here. It's going to pass through this filter board before coming to this board on the left. This board on the left has several functions. Function 1 is the power supply, as you can tell with the main filter capacitors. Function 2 is to handle channel 1's amplification, as you can see with the transistors mounted to the heatsink here. And function 3 is to handle the outputs, as you can see with the binding pulse in the back. Obviously in the middle we have our large toroidal transformer and on the right we have another board with several functions. Function 1 is going to be to handle the inputs. You can see our XLR inputs over there in the back. Function 2 is going to handle channel 2's amplification circuitry. You can see the transistors on the right mounted to the heatsink. And it's also got the operational amplifier with the four op amps built in right here, which is U3. So that'll be our first test point. We have one more board here on the front, which handles our volume control and then our power switch in the front. And then there is a little small fan back in here. You can't see it's got a cover over it. No big deal. Nothing to look at there. So that's about it. So step one, we're going to probe the signals on U3 back here. Here we are back at the scope. Let's start by checking channel 2's first operational amplifier, op amp U3B. And this output is going to be pin 7. So there's pin 7 for channel 2. Let's check channel 1 of the same op amp. And this is going to be pin 8. And they look identical. So let's rule those first set of op amp circuits out. Let's move on to the next set. This will be the same op amp chip with two different outputs. Channel 2's output will be pin 1. So here's pin 1. Now let's check channel 1's, which is going to be pin 14. And again, they look identical. So we can roll out this entire op amp U3. Let's move on to the next set, which is going to be U1 for channel A, or channel 1, and U5 for channel 2. Let's start with channel 2's U5 pin 1. So there's channel 2, and I should note for reference, both channels are set to negative 18 dB for volume. So again, this is channel 2, op amp U5 pin 1. Let's go to channel 1's op amp U1 pin 1.
Aha. So here's our issue. Op amp U1 for channel 1 is not amplifying correctly. So to completely verify this, let's check the input to both op amps. Let's start with uh, U5 for channel 2. The input for this should be pin 3. There's pin 3. Now let's go ahead and check the input for channel 1's op amp U1. That's also going to be pin 3. Ah, too quick to suspect the op amp. So the op amp input for U1 is low. So let's go back again. Again, this is channel 1's input to op amp U1. Let's go back to channel 2's input to op amp, op amp U5. So take this as a reference compared to that. So channel 2 just has a larger input signal. So the op amp itself may be okay, but now we're narrowing it down. We've ruled out the first set of operational amplifiers, which is that main chip U3, and we know we have an issue somewhere before op amp U1. So there's not much in that circuit that can go wrong, so we can start probing and trying to identify what's wrong in that circuit. So let's take a quick look at the circuit and what components are in between the good signal at the output of op amp U3 and the bad signal at the input of op amp U1. In series with these op amps we really just have three components. We have capacitor C26, we have capacitor C16, and resistor R38. If I had to guess, I would say that one or both of those capacitors uh, has gone bad. So I'm just going to check where I can. It's really hard the way these uh, capacitors are mounted on the board. There's no space between the bottom of the capacitor and the board to get my probe in there and touch one of the leads. So I'm going to try and um, find some of these resistors and measure uh, there. So let's just start with um, the one I can see is R35. So I'm going to check both sides of that. One side should have a signal. Obviously the other side is going to ground so that won't have much of anything. So let's check R35. Alright, so the first side I probed is the signal side. So this is a good signal. This signal looks better than the input to the op amp. Again, let's go back to that op amp input for reference. That was pin 3 of U1, which is here. And back to R35, which is here. So we have a good signal at R35. So that means we ruled out C26 as being bad. So either C16 is bad or R38 is bad. And again, if I would guess, it would be C16. So let's try and find R38. And I'm going to measure both sides of that, or at least find one side of that. So here we go, R38. is there. So here's one side, here's the other side. So I can't tell which one is the input, but it doesn't matter. They're both the same. So we have a good signal at the input of C16, and we have a bad signal at the output of C16, which means there's something wrong with C16. Let's take a look at C16, and that's this cap right here. So there's nothing really noticeable about it. It's not bulging doesn't appear to be leaking. If we look at it on the bottom of the board, right here, these two on the right, nothing noticeable about that as well. Solder joints look okay. So let's just go ahead and remove it and see if we can get anything with the ESR meter. Alright, here's C16 removed from the unit. Let's take a closer inspection of it again. The top doesn't appear to be bulged in any way. Bottom shows no signs of leaking or bulging as well. Let's go ahead and test it with the ESR meter. So this is a 50 microfarad, excuse me, this is a 10 microfarad at 50 volts. So we should be between 5 and 6 ohms ESR. You can see the ESR meter doesn't even register it. 
And just to prove that the ESR meter itself is working, go ahead and test a new capacitor that I have. This is 10 microfarads at 63 volts, so it's a little slightly higher rating. And this should, again, be between 5 and 6 ESR. And you can see this one's at 2.6, 2.7 ohms ESR. So this new one is reading just fine. The old one is probably completely open. So this thing is dead. Let's put this new one in and test it out. All right, I replaced the capacitor. I reinstalled that left board. And I have my same 500 hertz input. I have both channels set to negative 26 dB. Let's take a look at the outputs. And there we go, they match identically. So that was it. One little tiny 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitor that was open, that was it. So let me overlay the signals to make sure that they match. Identical, they look beautiful. Last thing to do, let's hook channel one up to a speaker and make sure the audio sounds good. Welcome to the final test. I have channel two still hooked up to the oscilloscope, as you can see. I have channel one now hooked up to a speaker, so let's test the output by turning up the volume. Sounds fantastic. This one's done. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.